Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye of the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, and Rabbit Hole. And here I am with my uh, latest limited run game um, purchase, my acquisition. And it is uh, a very exciting, uh, very interesting little item. Uh, a couple of items, actually. Um, check it out. No More Heroes 2. And... No More Heroes 1. Uh, it also comes with, like, a, a couple of collector's cards, which I'm definitely holding on to. Look at this! Fuck, that's gorgeous! Holographic, uh, holographic card here featuring Sylvia Crystal, Travis, and uh, Shinobu. Gorgeous. Gorgeous holographic stuff. Uh, re really enjoy this. Um, and then, you like, you have the... Ooh! Damn! The entire... The entire cat, all of the bosses from the first game. Wow, stunning, stunning, stunning. Uh, definitely, definitely hang on to those. And we also got a flag. Uh, the flag is going over my TV. It's a, it's a, it's um, it's a recreation of the flag you see in like the city in the game. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. Like for the city, I always got had the impression of. I don't know if we've ever. Uh, ever gotten like confirmation like what the flag is supposed to be but but i do have it so yeah i am a hardcore no more heroes fan and i have i literally am going to have a flag in my room so uh what, what's more than that though um i believe these games actually come with uh art books um so i'm kind of reluctant to open this because i i'm not entirely sure if this is true uh but what i from what i remember you're supposed to get like art books going over like the details of of the game uh so i've actually i actually already own the Sw game on switch already that i own the uh, digital version so I, I paid a lot of cash for this shit um so let's uh yeah check a look take a look at this uh gorgeous box art very uh very gorgeous wish i had a place to display it because this is uh, one of those things yep yep check it out holy shit Probably should turn the light on. Um, and that was straight up DSP, like, alarm tier. Yeah, well, at least I uh, actually got to the unboxing. All right. Uh, damn, look at this. All right. Oh, yeah. Damn. No More Heroes behind the scenes. Uh, yes, I actually get a small No More Heroes art book behind the scenes. Yes, going to destroy... Yep, classic, uh, classic stuff. You have the uh, the motorcycle there, the Shivo rock, <laughs> rocker. I actually don't know how to pronounce it. Travis and Sylvia, and oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Why are there no more heroes? Is Travis a model citizen? What media diet powers the world's top assassins? And how did an underpowered game console shape the evolution of Grasshopper Manufacturer's most enduring hit? We sat down with No More Heroes Executive Director Grochi Suda, Suda51, to discuss the origins of the game and more. G gotta love how they, uh, they, ha they take a jab at the Wii in this, this article. Oh man, just, just imagine what No More Heroes would be if it was on a real console. Looking back to the first game, Grasshopper and Limited Run published together, the Silver Case HD, the original Silver Case, and No More Heroes were separated by nearly a decade. How would you say that you and Grasshopper grew as both game designers and, and as storytellers between these two games? Over those ten years, there were one or two ways in particular Grasshopper and I grew as game creators. The Silver Case is more of an adventure title, whereas No More Heroes is a full-on action title. In those ten years, I had my own plan for growth in my head. It was intentional that we move from adventure titles towards full action. During that time, we worked on a few other titles with a bunch of other people, and I really feel my development plan pretty much went as I'd hoped. One of the biggest things that helped both me and Grasshopper as a company grow and become the developers we are now was working with Capcom and Shinji Mikame on Killer7, which was a really big turning point for us. You've talked a lot about the various inspirations behind elements of the No More Heroes games, every from the characters to the setting, but I'm curious what inspired its vibe. Things like the way it blends intense violence and mundane daily life, or slapstick with brutal story twists. As far as No More Heroes is concerned, and I guess this reflects on my work in general, the things that I took the most inspiration were the TV series Jackass, the movie El Topo, and the filmography of Charles Bronson. 
I really like Bronson's films. One of my life goals is to see every single one of them before I die. So, No More Heroes is a sort of mix of the low, stressed downtime, slapstick comedy, violence, and mundane daily life, all this stuff. Not just a mix of the parts of life, I guess you could say, but a mix of different forms of entertainment as well. I pretty much just took a bunch of stuff from all the different forms of entertainment and pop culture that I enjoy and sucked them all together in a game, which is how No More Heroes came together. Everything is slapped together in a seemingly haphazard, but actually pretty calculated way like that. What do you mean when you say it's calculated, especially in terms of the game design? When I say calculated, I mean it was all inside my head before we started making the game. I took a whole bunch of stuff that I liked and wanted to bring together. But it wasn't just stuff that I liked personally, but also stuff that I felt would go well in this sort of game. Things that would work well together with the scenarios and the various characters and the narrative. The game itself is a big mix of stuff. The most calculated part of the game was definitely the ranked battles. There are 10 ranked battles that Travis has to fight through, each with a particular enemy. Each enemy has specific elements of the different types of entertainment and pop culture I was inspired by. I thought hard about each one of those ranked battles. Okay, this character, here is their basic setting. Okay, this is something from outside the game that I think would fit well here. For example, with the fight with the android magician... Wait, what? With the fight with the android magician? What? Harvey is meant to be an android... What? Is this, is this a mistranslation? No, android magician. <laughs> I'm just like, wait a minute, what? Is this is this canon? Is it is this official? Uh, okay, is he just pulling this out of his ass? I. Uh, okay, whatever. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go over this later. We're playing through the game again. Was sort of based on David Copperfield. With the fight with Holly Summers, I took elements of the movie Hal Topo and incorporated them into there. Oh yeah, I've, I've got to see Hal Topo. It wasn't just a case of, okay, hey, let's mix all this stuff together and just kind of see what comes out. It may seem like a random mix of things, I guess, if you just kind of wrote it out on a list, but when actually incorporating it into the game, I made sure that each element of these different types of entertainment, games, films, stuff like that, everything was put exactly in the place that would best fit in the game, instead of just tossing it all in together. And one of the areas where I think the game came together best was with the huge mix of ideas that gelled really well. As a protagonist, Travis Touchdown is as unusual as the game. He's obsessed with pop media and loves cute characters, but at the same time, he seems to have no real reluctance to kill people. I feel like Travis would be a villain in any other game. He could almost be seen as a sociopath. Yeah, it's clear that Travis does have some soci sociopathic tendencies to him, which was somewhat intentional. At the same time, he's not supposed to be portrayed as a full-on psychopath or anything like that. He definitely does have a really strong and very personal sense of justice, which is particularly to Travis himself. He doesn't really expect it though, right? Travis himself doesn't really get into this deeply in the game, and he might not just full on come out, full on come out and say it, but he really cares a lot about his town, about the people who live there. He feels Santa Destroy as his own personal base, or maybe a sanctuary, I guess you could say. And you know, you the you, United States uh, United Assassins Association and the rank battles. As far as Travis is concerned, there are a bunch of dudes who are coming into his town and messing stuff up. As far as Travis is concerned, that's not cool, and he feels like he needs to do something about it. These guys are trying to screw up his town, and they're messing with the people there. So far as Travis's choices are concerned, the only thing he can really do is eliminate these dudes. So while he does have these sort of sociopathic tendencies and elements to him, he wasn't specifically meant to be portrayed as a full-on sociopath, or as a reflection on, you know, sociopathic conditions. I guess that's a half and half answer. Basically, he's portrayed the way he's portrayed on purpose, but he does have things beside himself that he cares about, even if he may not freely admit it. At the same time, No More Heroes in general, and Travis in particular, they're the kind of game and the kind of character that players don't really need to think too deeply about. At the time No More Heroes debuted, Nintendo platforms were still seen as highly restrictive in terms of content, more kid-oriented than the competition. Was creating an ultra-violent game with such dark story themes for the Wii seen as a risk, if so, do you feel that risk paid off? What is with this weird anti-Nintendo narrative? I, I pointed this out already, but uh, this is way out of place. Just talk about the game! Actually, I've never really felt or had the image of Nintendo as being specifically family-friendly or more restrictive in terms of content. More kid-oriented. Maybe because it was never true. <laughs> like, I feel like Suno's just kind of shitting on this guy here. Uh, okay. Maybe it's because I've been in the industry for so long. This probably happens to most people, if not everyone, but that sort of sense gets a bit blunted. Personally, I've been playing Nintendo games ever since way, way back in the day, when Nintendo games first became a thing. I have always felt about Nintendo that more than, than them being specifically family-friendly, or restrictive of content, or more kid-oriented, 
I've always felt they were more the sort of company that would both make and also publish the type of games that you wouldn't see on other platforms, regardless of dark themes, violence, or whatever. Obviously, they have stuff like the various Mario games, and a lot of games from third parties as well, that would definitely be considered more family-friendly, more safe for kids. But I've never really personally had that strong of an image of Nintendo being more restrictive than anywhere. Because of that, I never really consider it much of a risk to put No More Heroes on the Wii. It was more of an opportunity to put out that sort of game that we might not have been able to put out on another platform with a different company. Rather than having an image of Nintendo as a restrictive and family-friendly thing, it's always been a fe more of a feeling of, I guess you could say, anything goes with Nintendo for me. The fact that you decided to make an open-world action game on Wii actually seems very daring. Open-world games really took off and became big once the HD consoles launched, but Wii was much less powerful than those systems. What was the thought behind putting such an ambitious work on a relatively un underpowered platform? Why are we talking about Wii? Like, ask about the fucking game. As far as the power of the platform, spec-wise and all, while Wii may not been a have been as high spec as some of the other platforms, I never really felt that that was much of an issue for us. As you can see in the aesthetics of our games, Grasshopper as a studio has never really shot for the full-on realism type of look or anything like that. We've always been much more interested in our own specific style, creating the sort of art that we're really into. A lot of that isn't really reliant on high spec tech. With No More Heroes, we were aiming for, visually at least, a look similar to the new cinema of the US back in the 60s and 70s. So yeah, aesthetics-wise, there wasn't really much of a need to have an extremely high-spec platform to work on. When No More Heroes first came out, the studio had been around for all, about 10 years at that point, and we were still relatively young, both as creators and as a studio. Putting No More Heroes on the Wii, apart from the aesthetics, there were certainly parts, due to it being open world and everything, that were a bit challenging since the Wii didn't have the highest specs on the market at that time. But we actually felt that that was part of the fun of it. The challenge was one to take on, to see what we could do with the somewhat limited specs that we were afforded. Also, at the same time, we had just completed Blood Plus and Samurai Champloo. So No More Heroes was the third action game we had, we had made in a row for the platform, so we had already gotten used to the platform itself. Its specs, its possibilities and limitations, the pipeline we had within the studio had really come together by that point. It was put together well. Everybody knew what they were doing and what they needed to do. So honestly, it wasn't really much of a problem for us at all. Yeah, it was a bit of a challenge putting that sort of open world game on the Wii, but it wasn't really... It wasn't anything we weren't really ready for, and the challenging parts were part of the fun. We saw plenty of action games that attempted to make use of Wii's motion controls to enhance the realism of the mechanics. What was your approach to make No More Heroes stand out from that crowd? The game's use of the Wii Remote and motion controls developed organically as we were making the game. From the very start, we said, okay, the Wii Remote and its motion controls are really fun and interesting. I knew that there would definitely be a few ways that they could use it to make the game stand out. You've got the basic controls, you know, holding it, slashing it, swinging around, stuff like that. Since this is basically a sword fighting game, I felt right off the bat that the Wii Remote and the way you control it would be perfect. As we were developing the game and working on exactly how to use the motion controls, we would come up with little ideas here and there. Instead of just holding the remote and then kind of swinging it back and forth to kill a bunch of guys, since you're going to be going through dozens and hundreds of dudes that you have to cut down, it would get tiring and repetitive after a while. So we decided to add a few extra elements here and there, charging and stuff like that. But we didn't really have a concrete plan at the very beginning to be like, okay, this is what we're going to do with the controls to make this game really stand out. This is what we're going to do that. That's going to be new and revolutionary. Again, it really just sort of developed naturally as they went along. The one thing that I was sure about starting out was slashing up your enemies and charging the sword, just swinging the remote around like a little kid. That was definitely going to be one of the fun parts of the game. And from the first time I picked it up and tried it out, I thought, this feels good. This is what we're going to go with. Do you feel like something was lost in moving the game to systems that don't have motion controls? Or do you feel that there are ways to make up for the loss of that sort of physical, visceral interaction? Yeah, we've ported the No More Heroes series over to a few other platforms. Since there are no other platforms that have the exact same controls as the Wii's motion control, there is something that gets a little bit lost in translation. I guess you could say. What we have to do there is basically, we have no choice but to rely as much as possible on the D-pad and traditional controls. But I do think that with the Switch, we've been able to bring the controls back a lot closer to the way they were to the way they were originally planned for the Wii versions. If possible, I'd definitely like people to play the game on either Wii or Switch, because that's really the way the games were intended to be played from the start. The definitive way to play No More Heroes. Not the PC, not, not No More Heroes Paradise Forever, the Wii or the Switch. Master Race. 
even looking back at games like Fire Pro Wrestling and The Silver Case, your writing often grapples with morality. How does No More Heroes reflect that trend, your personal philosophy as a writer? The Silver Case and Killer7 were games that had a lot of text stuffed into them, especially The Silver Case. Almost to the breaking point, I wanted to do something that went against that with No More Heroes. I mean, No More Heroes from the very start was going to be an action game. But at the same time, I had a lot of things I wanted to say in the game, a lot of things to express. But due to various constraints, such as budgeting and tech constraints and stuff like that, we had to take certain shortcuts. For example, with cutscenes, we were only able to do about 60 minutes of those altogether. If you've got 60 minutes of cutscenes, there's really only a certain amount of dialogue you're going to be able to stuff into that. Even without the text, you know, there are other ways of expressing things. But there's only going to be a certain amount of communication that you're going to be able to stuff into the scenes. And so instead of doing something like an adventure game, especially something like The Silver Case, a text-heavy adventure game, where basically as long as you make sure the player doesn't get sick of it, you can pretty much write infinitely, you know? As much text as you want can go into the game. But here we had to think of different ways to express the themes and ideas that I wanted to express, not just through text, but visually as well. One of the things I wanted to do with my text-heavy games was, put simply, use this huge deluge of words to build the psychological profile of these characters and the world they inhabit. Since we weren't able to do that for No More Heroes, we decided to use visuals and the gameplay itself to take the place of that text. While we were making the game, the best ways for me to express the things I wanted to express and the methods we'd use to make up the constraints, we were confronted with... Uh, with, pre with presented themselves naturally, I think. I want to express this, but I can't stuff an hour of text in here. Okay, I'm going to say, put it into this battle. I'm going to have the visuals go like this. And so it was really, how do I put this? Not a coincidence, but it really just sort of happened to come together the way it did. And once I sat down and went through the entire final product, I was happy to see that it worked out exactly the way I wanted, and I was able to express what I wanted to express. All right, here we go. Uh, some artwork here. You have, like, Travis, uh, Na Dr. Naomi, Travis again, uh, Sylvia, uh, looking gorgeous in this art book. Uh, ooh, yeah, haven't seen this before. Dr. Peace and Death Metal. And some random girl with a mask. Uh, Shinobu. Man, this is some stunning artwork. Is this is this original or concept art? Yeah, you have the Shinobu with Destroy Man. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen this uh, Holly Summers one before. The one where she's kneeling. Uh, let's shake. I don't know why he's in here. Uh, okay, fucking Harvey. Okay. I don't even have, like, his full name in here. Like, he blo his head blocks out his first name. Okay. What the fuck were they going on about when it com calling him an android? Like, the fucking mask? Like, okay, whatever. Yeah, Speedbuster. Uh, you don't you don't need to see Speedbuster in her giant ass. Um, yeah, Bad Girl, uh, looking great as ever. And Jean, uh, with uh, very fine legs. Okay. Uh, Henry... Yep, Thunder Ryu, Lava Cove. Oh, I guess I should show them off. Yeah, it's just it's just general concept art. If you've uh, if you've uh, if you're a No More Heroes fan, you've seen a lot of this. It, it's nice that I have a physical version of this because I'm such a fan, right? But Holly Summers missile and hand grenade. Official name is the RBS seventy, a laser guided anti aircraft missile actually in use in Sweden. Yeah, she is Swedish. That's 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 an interesting little tidbit. Uh, hand grenade unknown as models used in Sweden, but is used in Finland. Unlike the famous pineapple design found in the U.S., this one is more egg-shaped. Oh, wow. Okay. I had no idea. They put so much effort into this stuff. Like, holy crap. Uh, I guess you could, like, look at the, the picture here. Wow, they put so much work into shit you didn't even, like, think about. Oh. Now you're playing with power and with yourself. Okay. Okay. It is the mid-2000s, and video games have an identity crisis. The days when cartoon mascots ruled the gaming world have long since passed into irrelevant... What, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but their memory lingers like a bad hangover, giving the medium's transition to something more resembling maturity and real realism a shambling, stumbling quality. Who the fuck wrote this? I, I fucking hate this already. Who, who wrote this garbage? Okay. What a fucking retard. I, I hate this already. Meanwhile, a culture war has begun to take form between hardcore gamers 
who demand realistic, violent games about theft and murder, even shitting, versus the casuals who remain perfectly happy to stick with family-friendly par- What? Who the fuck wrote this? This is, this is garbage! Finally, we meet Jean, a lethal bare-knuckle brawler, and Henry, brandishing a crossbar or lightsaber years before Kylo Ren introduced the weapon into Star Wars lore. Like, ah, oh, fuck, who... What? Yeah, I'm not reading this. This guy fucking sucks. Before he worked in games, Jonathan Holmes was at MTV's Road Rules. No wonder you're a complete fucking dipshit. A precursor to Johnny Knoxville's Zack Swift, so he's almost like a pre-beta version of Travis Touchdown. He's written about games for 13 years for places like Nintendo Force, Destructoid, and appears on podcasts like Sup Holmes and The Worst Song on Earth. He has interviewed Suda51 six times, which is weird because 5 plus 1 equals 6. Jonathan Holmes is a fucking retard. <laughs> like, nobody likes game journalists, no one likes you, and I'm not reading your shitty article out loud. Like, shouldn't be in the book. I would straight up rip that out. Um, garbage. You're I didn't even know it was a game journalist at first. And I was just like, wait, well, why does this suck? Okay. Fucking retard. Okay. Uh, should I go ahead and look at the No More Heroes 2 one as well? I might as well. Oh, damn! Damn! Fuck yes. Look at this. Original soundtrack. Ah, oh, damn. Yep, three discs. Fuck. The Virgin Child. Yes! Yeah, this is all going. This is all going. Oh, man. I legit might actually. I don't even think I have a CD player right now. Uh, does Xbox One take these things? I, I am definitely, definitely playing it. Definitely playing that. That is that is great. That is great. And of course, we have like uh, the game as well, uh, as stunning as ever, stu stunning and beautiful as ever. Actually, prettier. Actually, who the fuck is that? Yeah, bad girls on the cover. I don't think they. Yeah, I, th I think they redesigned the cover. Like the the Travis art is the same, but I think uh, I don't think bad girls on the background and the Wii version. Maybe maybe my version is just. Uh, old or something. Uh, maybe th maybe they just added in. That's pretty cool. And what's this? Oh damn it! I don't know what this is. It's like it's a case to hold a Switch game. Uh, I think I don't know what the fuck it is. I guess like you can just carry the game around with you if you want to. Uh, but the cool thing about this, look at this. Uh, look at that. It's it's Jean. Like unbelievable. You've never actually. Um, You've never actually seen her face. Wow, that is a that is a treat for hardcore fans. That is a treat. All right, so I think that's everything in uh, the No More Heroes one box. Uh, yeah, you know, we might as well go ahead and do No More Heroes two since we're since we're here. Uh, all right, No More Heroes two. I'm not nearly as fond as No More Heroes two, so I probably won't gush over it as much. I don't, I'm definitely gonna like skip the fucking game journalist shit, but. No more heroes too. Uh, desperate struggle. I guess I should uh, show off the box here. I guess first things first. We uh, I should probably check out my uh, the art book again. Does he talk a little bit about No More Heroes 2? Because, like, he didn't work nearly as much on it. Uh, no More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle. The concept art is gorgeous, though. Look at that. I don't remember seeing that anywhere, but that's some uh, gorgeous stuff. Okay. Where No More Heroes explore the duality of... Wait. Hang on. That sounded like a game journalist. Yep. Yep. 
Skipping it. Fuck you, Jonathan Holmes. You suck. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't... He doesn't have an interview for this one. Well, he didn't work on it. So, yeah. Skelter Helter. Um, you know, Nathan Copl Copeland. Kimmy Howell! Oh, damn! Yeah, have you ever seen the concept art for that? Like, look at her! She's go She's adorable! Look at, like, the little bear and, like... Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Matt Helms. Yeah, fun fact, I actually knew a Matt Helms, so this is always hilarious to see this. Uh, new Destroy Man. You know, an actual android. This is what an android looks like, Suda. I'm sorry, I guess not an android. He'd be a cyborg, excuse me. Well, an android in uh, Dragon, Dragon Ball Logic. Yeah, Alice Twilight. Wait a minute, hang on. We're skipping, like, a certain someone here. Okay, Alice Twilight. Um, yeah, uh, the concept art is, uh, honestly, like, probably better than the originals, honestly. I've never really looked at, like, No More Heroes 2's box art before. But, um... Yeah, uh, Sylvia again. Yeah, I think it's better than the originals, actually. Uh, kind of surprisingly. Wait a minute! Hang on! Hang on! What? Did I... We're skipping a lot of people here. What? Hang on, they're not giving. They didn't give us everyone. Hang on, there, there's a certain someone that I wanted to see. All right, look at uh, yeah, the gear. Yeah, yeah, Helder Skelter, Copeland. Oh, Kimmy Howell. Okay. Well, I guess we should show them all off uh, just so you can see what they look like real quickly. Yeah, Nathan Copeland. Like you see, like uh, you know, all this work that put into the equipment. They. I love this. I kind of wish the the art books were a bit more detailed about this stuff. Yeah, Kimmy Howell. Yeah, her stocking, her heels. Uh, lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, early in development, she had, like, a... Uh, she had glasses. Uh, which they probably should have kept, but I don't, I don't know. I like the glasses, so I, I would... Astronomy book. I don't know why they removed the... Uh, the glasses. Uh, Alice Twilight. Not a, not a big, um, not a big Alice Twilight fan. A lot of people love her, but I don't. I don't really care for her too much. Let's see here. Alice Twilight. Yeah, Matt Helms. Uh, let's see. fucking con. Like, I got an art book for No More Heroes 2, and I don't see Margaret. Where, where is she? I, I got con? God damn. You had one job, Suda. You, you gave me an art book and doesn't have Best Girl in it. Like, what? 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 Damn it. That is disappointing. Okay, well, at least the first art book was good. Uh, th there is another Suda um, interview in there. I, I suppose I should read it. I mean, does he explain why Margaret isn't in this fucking art book? Is it because people don't care about, like, uh, No More Heroes 2 as much? Let's see. Okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, art book. Yep, no more heroes too, huh? Desperate struggle. Yeah, so again, they redesigned the cover, but again, no Margaret. Why'd they throw new Destroy Man on there? Why is Alice Twilight on there? What are they doing? Like, what did they do to me? Like, ah, oh, no, damn it. Okay, she better be in this thing. Okay, okay, yeah, imagine carrying that out in public with you. Like, you whip this out and, like, someone just sees it. Like, good artwork. Like, really good artwork, but, uh, 
damn, does it kind of look sexual. Yeah, the, entire, the, the cases in general are gorgeous. Yep, yep. Interior is kind of boring. It's, it's just a flag. Damn it. Damn it! What is this game do? What are they doing to me? Okay. What'd you do to me, Suda? All right. Um, let's see. So that's it. Yep, another soundtrack. Um... It's almost, were the art books put together by, like, different people? They almost, they feel weirdly, like, inconsistent. Like, why, why didn't they give me everything? All right, uh, what's this? Uh, no More Heroes 2. There wasn't a poster with the first one, I think. Um, I am not putting that on my wall. Fuck you. Wait, hang on. I am not putting that on my wall. Thankfully, it, <laughs> thankfully it has a... A flip side, which I think is a bit better, but um, tits are still hanging out. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm definitely hanging it up, but... Uh. Yeah, would, would have preferred something uh, a little bit less sexual, uh, honestly, Suda, but... Mm. I mean, shit, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do, like, if I have a girl over here? It's just... <sighs> explain what the fuck that is? Yeah, it's uh, from a video game I like. No more heroes. Oh, oh, fuck yes! I actually did not notice there was a there was a poster for the other one too. Excellent. Yeah, this one I think is gonna go up there. I don't know why they're double sided. Fuck that! Yeah, fuck you, Suda. I am not putting that on my wall either. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, No More Heroes? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so they're, they're both going up for sure. Um, at some point in the future, uh, when I do the next Black Cat show, like, I don't know, five years from now, you'll probably, you'll probably see them up behind there. Actually, I don't know. I guess I could put them on this wall here. Um, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to figure that out. Uh, I think that's everything. Um... And this is a second art book. Yeah, so um, all in all, like uh, a pretty ex pretty exciting package. Um, obviously, I don't want like overtly sexualized uh, posters on my wall, but at least you can like flip them around so you don't have to see it. So you get like a, a slightly less like a, a slightly less um, sexualized thing, uh, which which is nice. Um, the, the No More Heroes 2 art book was kind of disappointing. I kind of wish it showed off more stuff. It kind of does this thing where, like... It goes into a bit more detail of, like, uh, the character designs and stuff like that. But, like, it, it just begs the question, like, wh why wasn't... Why didn't they do this with every character? Like, they legit, like, skip, like, you know... Um, the number one fight. They skip Margaret. Uh, they skip Vladimir. Like, lots of my... Lots of the best fights. Ryuji... They skip, like, basically all of my favorite fights. Like, what... I, I don't know what they were thinking with this. Like, the No More Heroes 1 artwork was fine. The interview was fine. Um, the game journalist shouldn't have been, like, allowed to contribute anything. Like, we don't want to hear from a game journalist, okay? There is never a time I want to pick up, like, a video game and see an excerpt from a game journalist in there. Uh, that, that was, like, the most rage-inducing things about it. Uh, that was that was pretty embarrassing, but for the most part, um, yeah, the collector items are cool. Uh, I, I'm holding on to all of this; uh, it's all nice. Uh, I'm gonna listen to the soundtrack probably probably uh, tonight. Um, it's it's wonderful. Uh, I, I'm very happy I picked this up. Uh, if you're one of the lucky few, um, you know, way to go, bro. Um, very exciting. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to No More Heroes 3 and uh, the Silver Case, actually. I think it's supposed to be in my mailbox now, so I better go out and look for it. Uh, but all in all, like, very happy with my purchase, very happy with uh, Suda51, and I can't wait until No More Heroes uh, 3 comes out. Uh, I'm Cody Lee, owner of BlackCatBooks.org and author of Cruel and Beautiful Eye of the Dragon and Rabbit Hole, and I will see you all when No More Heroes 3 launches. Thanks. Thank you.